Coming up, if you're a cloud architect or ops manager, we'll review the latest updates to governing your Azure subscriptions. We'll look at Microsoft's approach to Azure governance overall, which now includes more granular control of policy across different apps and departments in your organization with management groups, new Azure Blueprint templates that simplify setting up your environment to meet specific compliance requirements such as ISO, as well as easier tracking of policy changes and their impact. And stay tuned as we show you how you can now apply governance capabilities across your Kubernetes workloads in Azure. So I'm joined today by Satya Bell from the Azure Governance team. Nice to have you on the show for the first time. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So the last time we covered Azure Governance, Jeremy Winter was on the show and we looked at how you can control the implementation of policy, even retroactively, throughout your DevOps process across your subscriptions. And we also introduced Azure Blueprints to establish repeatable architectural and infrastructure patterns for your environment. To be clear though, when we talk about Azure Governance, we're talking about a set of capabilities that we give cloud architects and cloud engineers to be able to better assert control over Azure subscriptions in their organization. Yeah, that's absolutely right. When you think about Azure Governance as a set of capabilities that we give cloud architects and cloud engineers to quickly and easily set the right guardrails for things such as security, compliance, and even your everyday cost management for all your Azure subscriptions. And this is essentially is important during the DevOps process as apps are being built, deployed, and managed in production at a rapid cadence. Right, so this clearly places the business and operational requirements front and center, and it's an added dimension to the ops in DevOps. It does, and of course you can use all these capabilities individually, but the real value is using them in unison as they help put into play a core set of governance practices which have been developed based on how we at Microsoft manage our own subscriptions. For example, one of the top customer pain points for any cloud architect is keeping track of all the subscriptions in the environment. We often see dozens of subscriptions per tenant or even hundreds if you're a large customer. Right, so how do we solve for this? So we've developed a capability and core practice called management groups, which is the highest level grouping construct under your tenant for your subscription, resource groups, and resources. So to be clear, management groups are the top level grouping construct that essentially organizes all your subscriptions and resources. Right, and that's really the point. This is where you'll want to start to get the structure right, and as all your policies, cost controls, will be applied to everything within the management group. For example, you can align these to specific departments within your organization, and you can nest management groups to align with policy structures and even organizational hierarchies that you want. And from there, you can use Azure Policy to set the operational rules across your subscriptions. You can apply a different set of operational requirements across different management groups that cover specific applications within those subscriptions. As part of that, you can establish Azure Blueprints, which comprise of a combination of Azure management templates to provision resources, your role-based access controls, and policies as well. And finally, you can oversee and set budget thresholds using capabilities within Azure Cost Management. Okay, great, and, and that makes sense as you start off with organizing your subscriptions, and so these capabilities combined help you to establish a working model for governance across your organization. Now, can we see it in action? Sure, let's take a look. So let's start at the heart of the governance strategy, which is management groups. Over here, I have a root management group which hangs off my tenant, and underneath that, I've created a management group for each of my business units. I can also see that some of the new subscriptions got, that got created are hanging off this root management group. I can click into my application management group, and what you'll notice is I created a production management group as well as a pre-production management group. And the reason I did this is because I want to have specific policies and cost controls for my pre-production environment. I can drill into this further and see management groups for each of the applications that I've created, and I can see the various different subscriptions that roll under that particular application. One of the things that I've noticed is I need to create a new management group for a new e-commerce application that we have started. When I click Add Management Group, I can easily provide a unique name for my management group that I want to create and hit Save. In order to create a management group, you need to be an Active Directory admin and you need to elevate your permissions in the Azure portal. Now that my management group is created, I can very easily go back into my root node select the new subscription that got created, and move it under that specific management group I just created. As you can see, it's become really easy for me to now manage all my subscriptions in my environment. 
Okay, so that's how you can start to organize your subscriptions under management groups. What types of things can you now do? Yeah, this is the beauty of management groups because it now gives me the ability to actually use it to do things as cost controls as well. So over here I have my, the new Azure cost management experience and I can actually filter my cost views by the different management groups I've created. I can then pivot and see what my costs have been over the last month I can even see a breakdown of my cost by the services, the various different regions, as well as the resource groups in my environment. And this is extremely important in cases where you may want to do chargeback for your various different business groups. Okay, so how do you go about setting policy in this case to manage cost? So let's take a look. Now this is the Azure policy experience where I can define various different policies for my different cost controls. We give you about four, 500 different policies that we ship out of the box, so you don't need to author these, you can just leverage the built-in policies. And one of these that I created is a standard tag policy. The standard tag policy essentially ensures that any new resource that gets created has a tag for the business owner and the cost code. And for existing resources, I can do an audit and see which of the resources do not have these tags applied to them. And what we made really easy with Azure Policy is now you can assign these policies to the management groups I just created. So here, for example, I can go and target this specific policy at the root management group, so any new resource that gets created will automatically inherit these tags from the resource group. Or if there's specific business unit policies, I can target it at those nested management groups as well. Okay, and how many different tags can we apply roughly? That's really up to you. We support up to 15 tags today, and we're going to increase that limit to up to 50 as well. Great. Now, given that dev and production environments are pretty dynamic, how as an ops manager and a cloud architect can you start to track policy compliance and also look at the compliance state of existing services? So we introduced an Azure Policy Compliance Dashboard, which is a single view to get the entire compliance of your entire Azure environment. I have 43% of my resources that are compliant and about 2,000 resources that are not compliant as well. I can see the top five policies with the most non-compliant resources, and I also get a great view into my compliance over the last seven days. Okay, so what happens if a resource that was previously compliant falls out of compliance? Can we see what actually changed? Yeah, so we have a new capability called change history. So, for example, one of the things that I want to ensure is that the cost code is applied to all my resources in my environment. And I'm going to search for this one VM by the name of Matt, which I think you're pretty familiar with, yeah. and see what actually changed on that particular resource. Now, nothing, I didn't change anything. Uh, let's Just find out. <laughs> <laughs> so I can click into this particular virtual machine, and I can click on the change history tab that tells me what exactly changed in the environment. We track changes for all the changes that happened into that particular VM. And I'm going to pick one specific change history item. One of the things I quickly see is the items in red and the left are things that got removed, and the things that are on the right, which are in green, are actually got modified. So it looks like, Matt, you went and actually removed the cost code tag, and to clear your tracks, you actually removed the created by tag as well. Nope, don't know what you're talking about. Nothing to do with me at all. But this is really a simple example, but take something more complex, such as changes to a network security group rule. Right, to really be able to tell what exactly changes in, in the environment is pretty powerful. Okay, right, so this new change history capability helps you understand what the change was that caused the resource to fall out of compliance in the first place. Yep. Cool. So how far back can you actually track the changes? Great question. We can go back as far as 14 days and change history is something that's enabled by default on all Azure resources. You can also export this data out to your own storage account if you need to keep it for compliance purposes. And you can create an alert on top of the Azure activity logs to get notified as soon as a change happens. Okay, cool. So what can you do beyond policy to ensure that new solutions are compliant right from the start? This is an area where we help templatize your environment setup. You can use Azure Blueprints to set up hub and spoke infrastructure, but we've also started to deliver built-in blueprints to help get compliant with regulations and various different standards. At Microsoft, we've done a lot at a service level ourselves to be compliant with Azure, and we're taking our own internal best practices and offering them as blueprints. Can we take a look? Let's do it. So this is the Azure Blueprints experience. You can get to it by searching for Azure Blueprints in the Azure portal search. I can click Create, and one of the things you notice is we give you a bunch of built-in templates that you can get started from. 
The first one I see here is a blank blueprint, so I can go and compose this the way I want it. But to make things a little easier, we have actually published a bunch of built-in blueprints that you can take advantage of. We're working on about 10 to 12 very specific compliance blueprints such as FedRAMP, NIST, CIS, and PCI. But one of the first ones we released this quarter is the ISO 27001. So let's start by taking a look at that. I can very simply provide a unique name for this blueprint. I can specify where this blueprint definition is saved. And the benefit of this is now that any subscription that gets created under the management group can get automatically stamped with this particular blueprint. I can click Next Artifacts. And this is really the beauty of these built-in blueprints, is now I come with a prepackaged set of policies and infrastructure resources that I can take advantage of because I know that these will help me meet my different regulations and standards in my environment. I can even customize these to add things such as my custom RBAC roles. And once I'm done composing my blueprint, it becomes really easy for me to stamp it out. And the stamping experience is really me going and selecting the various different subscriptions I want this blueprint to be applied to. So here, for example, I want my dev test, my pre-production and production to have the same exact blueprint so I know that my application can work in all three different environments. I can fill in a set of parameters for my blueprint. But one of the key capabilities that I wanted to emphasize is the blueprint locking mechanism. The blueprint lock essentially allows me as a cloud architect to define what goes into a subscription and even though I hand that su subscription over to an application team, they cannot modify or change any of the infrastructure capabilities. And now for the sake of time, I've actually gone and deployed this blueprint, and now you can see all the policies got applied to the subscription and all the different infrastructure resources got created successfully into that environment. Nice, and I suppose this also sets you up nicely if you need to show proof of compliance and produce an audit report. Exactly, now this gives me the one-stop shop for me to come and see what are the different resources, and because of the blueprint locks, I can rest assured that there's no configuration change that's happened on those resources that I deployed. To make things easier for auditors, we've also published some really good documentation for each of the blueprints showing what are the different resources that got created. Additionally, mapping the various different ISO compliance controls to the different policies as well. And you can learn more about this at the link shown. Now this looks like it's going to save operators and cloud architects a ton of time, and we know this is great for traditional infrastructure resources such as VMs, storage, and databases, but how does this then extend to modern application services such as containers? So we're really excited to announce that Azure Governance now extends to Azure Kubernetes service as well. One of the challenges we heard from a lot of enterprises is that we've seen that while Kubernetes is great to be able to take advantage of the infinite scale and near instant scale out, it's been really hard for them to manage and enforce compliance and see what may be causing compliance issues. Now you can manage policy across the AKS clusters in your environment. Similar to the other policies we have released, we have built-in policies for Azure Kubernetes service. This policy definition, for example, enforce unique ingress host names across your namespace, allows me to control what host names can access the services inside your Kubernetes clusters. And you can use the same exact experience that you'd used earlier to now target and assign this policy to a specific management group in your environment. And if there are special cases where I might want to exclude this policy from uh, a dev test subscription or a dev test management group, we provide you the flexibility to do that as well. Awesome. And this is great to see because AKS is one of the fastest growing services in Azure. Right. As I've shown you today, our goal is to really give you a consistent way to govern your entire Azure environment. And all these capabilities I've shown you today are actually free of charge. Great. Thanks so much for joining us, Satya. Where can people go to learn more? Azure management groups, cost management, policy, and blueprints are capabilities that are available today. And as I mentioned, we'll continue to add more compliance blueprints over time as well. You can learn more at the link shown below. And you can sign up for the preview of Azure governance capabilities for Kubernetes at the following link as well. Fantastic stuff. And of course, keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest in tech updates. Click here to subscribe and thanks for watching.